Today we're going to be looking at the level of authenticity that we had to produce for all of the vehicles and weapons that are in the game. Now I love guns, but how many of you have actually handled a real gun? I can tell you one thing, it's not like an air gun or anything like that. A lot of these guns are really heavy. For instance, when we were doing the motion capture for Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising, we had to go to great lengths to get the real guns. This is because the weight of these guns can actually affect the way that the animation looks. We use military specialists in our motion capture sessions to make sure that our characters in game move with a lot of weight like real soldiers do. So we actually loaded the motion capture actors up with webbing, we put lots of lead in that webbing to make sure they move with weight and purpose. We don't show you how many bullets are remaining in the gun so you have to kind of remember how many bullets you fired. You get the experience of being a soldier. So every vehicle in Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising has its own characteristics. By this I mean handling, look, turnout, weaponry, etc, etc. Everything from the smallest Jeep to the largest chopper, you'll find a completely different handling experience, but also something that's accessible. You don't need to be able to fly a flight sim in order to fly a helicopter in Operation Flashpoint. So when you're driving a 55-ton tank, that's going to feel very different to something like a DPV, which is a very light, agile vehicle. We spent an awful lot of time researching these vehicles. We've had to capture their engine sounds, we have to get the right hue of paint. We've also, of course, had to take these brand new vehicles and actually beat up and weather them. From a tactics point of view, it's very important that it's hard to see the infantry. The camo is a vital part of that. You actually find yourself looking for movement much more so than, than spotting guys, just as you do in real life in a natural environment full of bushes and trees. We wanted to make the game different than all the other shooters out there. Uh, in this game you're not a bullet sponge, so we wanted to make the damage model as realistic as possible. The damage in Operation Flashpoint is pretty gruesome. It's pretty much realistic, so if you get hit by a large round, you're very likely to have serious trauma to your body. The visual point of view represents damage in several different visual stages. You've got blood that seeps through the clothes, then you've got catastrophic damage, which is actually losing of a limb. And you could have your head blown open, your torso opened up, you could lose a leg or an arm. And this is all represented and modelled realistically. For Operation Flashpoint, it's very important to get a really nice, gritty style. In order to do that, we coined this phrase, war is seen through the lens. We use that to inform the visual language we use, pretty much in all aspects of art of the game. We use reportage photography, um, very striking black and white war photography that you've seen for all conflicts from World War II, Vietnam to modern day conflicts. That's typically very high contrast, black and white imagery, very striking. We use that to directly inform the look of the front end. The EGOS technology gives us a lot of post-production systems we can use, so film grain, colour cast. Um, we use each of those to create a very, very unique aesthetic for each mission and each time of day. With over 60 variations of weapons in Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising, it's difficult to choose a favourite. However, if you pin me down, I'd have to choose this one. The M4. It's versatile, it's rugged, and it's adaptable. And what's more, if you point it at things and pull the trigger, it kills them. For more personal situations, I prefer to go for a 45 automatic, of course, just in case. <laughs> 